everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be exploring changes in the world around us, which is from Chemistry Class 7, Chapter 2. Now, this is ICSC board. This is not NCERT, all right? Um, watch other videos on Class 7 Science. Um, there's playlists for that, so just watch those videos if you're stuck on something, all right? So, let's zoom in and study chemistry. Now, there are a lot of types of changes. First, let's actually see what a change is, you know. Now, a change is anything that changes, kind of like, makes a difference in an object. So, if you have water, alright, you've got water. Ah, I'll just make it a bit bigger. You've got water and you've got ice. Now, that's a change from water to ice because when you freeze some, uh, freeze some water, it becomes into ice. But in this video, we're going to be looking at how. How does it become into ice? What is the reason behind it? How does it change? What do? What is the change, actually? So, we're going to be learning that. So, if I grab that and rub everything out. Now, one of the most important ones is Natural changes. Natural changes might be you turning into an adult or me turning into an older person. Yeah. Man made changes. Man made changes um, are changes which are man made, meaning made by man. Not only men, or it can be made by women too, right? Alright, so that's man made changes. Examples can be cooking food. That's man made changes. You're making it, you're making it, alright? It won't happen naturally. Periodic changes. The changes that happen after a fixed interval of time are known as periodic changes. What can that be? Um, if you have a... Actually, let's take a pendulum, for example. Pendulum. What can that be? A pendulum is a thing that moves from this side to that side, right? So, what happens is that it travels to that side, then it comes back to this side, then it travels on that side back and forth and back and forth at a period period of time. Alright, let's rub that out and move on, shall we? Alright, non-periodic changes, the theory, changes that happen on any, any time are known as non-periodic changes. Sorry, non-periodic changes. Desirable changes, the changes, obviously, that we like and are useful, as the name suggests, and undesirable changes are changes that are harmful to us, and we don't like them, we don't want them to happen, but they just do. What can that be? That can be spoilage of food, right? You don't want food to get spoiled, you want to eat it up, you want to eat that yummy food, but it gets spoiled. So that's undesirable. Fast and slow changes. Changes that are fast, some changes are fast, some changes are slow. So that's basically fast and slow changes. Reversible and irreversible changes can be basically changes that can come back to its original state or changes that can't come back to its original state. These are normally resembled by these both side arrows. So if you have water on this side, you can rise ice on the bottom. So if you change water into ice, you can change it back into water by melting it for real. Okay. Sublimation can happen with ammonium chloride and iodine crystals. So sublimation, as we learned in the last chapter, was basically solid, solid turning into gas without turning into water. All right. That's sorry. That's sublimation. That's sublimation. So sublimation can happen with ammonium chloride and iodine crystals. Just random elements, but they do do sublimation, obviously. Physical changes. Physical changes are changes when the substance undergoing the process is not destroyed. The new non new no no new elements are formed. Only physical properties are changed. Now, chemical change can be substance are formed, new substances are formed, properties of the substance before and after the change are different, 
original properties disappear and we observe new ones. Change is permanent and change is irreversible. Burning of magnesium ribbon leaves magnesium oxide. You need to know these chemical terms to understand it, right? All right, changes involve energy, all right? There are two types of changes that we're going to be talking about that involve energy, which are exothermic, endothermic reaction and exothermic reaction. Now, endothermic reaction can be glucose plus heat of tongue gives a cooling effect on your tongue. So if you put glucose on your tongue, you're going to get cooling effect on your tongue. Now, this is this change is in which heat is absorbed. Now, endo means in, thermic means heat, while in exothermic um, reaction, heat is released, meaning out, in this in, absorbed, this is out. In this change, heat is released, cooking of food is an example. The reaction between lime and water is exothermic as the reaction becomes very hot. If you have water, water, and if you put lime, bits and pieces of lime in it, you're going to get a very milky substance which turns really, really hot. So that's that exothermic reaction. Let's move on. Evaporation. Evaporation is when a liquid has molecules, and now those molecules gain energy because there's heat on it. So they have enough energy to just escape and they move on. All right. Condens condensation is when you've got a solid, and now I mean, you've got a gas here. Oh my God, how did I just make that oxygen? You've got um, gas, it loses its heat and becomes water, all right? That's condensation. You can see that on a cold glass of water, right? That can happen. Uh, no, don't know what's wrong. Oop. Right, let's rub that out. Now, concentration is when you dissolve something. Okay, let's go on dissolution first. A substance thoroughly in sub another substance. When a substance mixes thoroughly in another substance, that can be dissolving. When you have a glass of water and you put salt in it, it gets dissolved. So that's thoroughly mixed with water. Concentration is when you dissolve a lot of water like lots of salt into water and then it can't really absorb more so that's very concentrated but when you've only put a pinch of salt in water and that's dissolved that's not very con concentrated so this one because it has very less salt in it we will call that very um not so concentrated or diluted but if you have lots of salt resolved in it you will call it quite concentrated all right Melting is the same as fusion, all right, just another name, and rusting. Rusting, if you have a metal um, and there's air and water around it, it will get these red brownish things on top of it, which is basically eating away of metals. And you can remove that because it's slightly stuck to it, but it, it's literally like the metal, you're cutting off the metal, basically. So, with that, we have finished this very energetic chapter and hope you understood everything, hope you learned something new, and I'll see you in the next video. So then, take care and bye-bye.